Wins and losses aren't our only measure. It's, you know, how can we get these young guys to be the best versions of themselves on and off the court. From the players' perspective, their uh, team goals is, you know, uh, get better, uh, win as many games as I can, um, try to, you know, eventually get to that ultimate goal of getting to state and winning state. Um, from coaching perspective, always, you know, trying to push these guys to be the best versions of themselves that they can be. Um, I think, you know, that if we can get them to that point, wins will come, you know, with that. Um, I think that's, you know, always a, a good goal that a coach um, can push their players to get to. This is going to be a fun year. We're so much more athletic. There's so many, so many more things that we can do. Um, so I would say a lot more athletic. Um, we got some really good leadership um, this year that uh, that um, can help us get to that get to that point that we want to get to. My greatest strength is hustle and just keeping positivity. Um, ever, people have told me that before and I really just like to encourage everybody else. I'm really excited to see how we can do. We've got a lot of new guys this year, new team. Um, I really want to see how well we can bond together and I think we have a really good chance of doing that. Goals this season are just, honestly, I want to win more games. So, big, uh, haven't had the best, but I'm trying to win games this year. And as a whole, we're a lot of young guys, so some guys are nervous, but you know, we still have, we got the, I would say dog mentality. We got a lot of guys who will get on the floor, or will crawl around, but you know, everybody's still finding their place, so. A biggest challenge is trying to form together. Um, I know we'll, we'll get there because of the seniors, but we, we have one or two freshmen on varsity, one sophomore on varsity, three seniors th er, and three juniors. Um, so trying to get those all, all those guys to mesh with uh, with each other when a lot of them haven't played with each other before. So I think trying to trying to have that team chemistry um, would be one of the biggest challenges. QCTV from the Anoka Area Ice Arena. It's Northwest Suburban Boys Hockey. Anoka versus the Osseo Oreos, and it was a penalty field game, and special teams took over as the, the Oreos scored first. It's Ty Prokoff on a power play goal. Coming up next, a power play goal answered by Sadam Caden uh, Sokup for the Anoka Tornadoes. Gavin Cheska then scores on another power play goal in the First period, two to one. And then the tornadoes come up. Another power play goal. That's four power play goals. They're tied at two at the end of the first period. Going to the second period, 10 seconds in. Another power play goal. Guess what? Krantz with a goal that gets past Lauren Lafferty with over 30 saves tonight. The uh, Orioles trying to get a breakout. Goes right onto the stick of Trevor Lang, and he ties it up at three. We're tied at three going into the third period. Again, the Orioles in the penalty box, and we've got a tic-tac-toe as Jake Swicky puts it through, up four to three. Anoka pressing late in the third period as uh, they send Lauren Lafferty to the bench. And Anoka can't seem to get that fourth goal across. It's four to three. Orioles over Anoka on QCTV on Thursday nights. For us, it's going to be, you know, just to try to get back to playing really good hockey. You know, we lost a lot of guys last year, and, and we want to get to a, a section final and give ourselves a chance to go to, to St. Paul. I think we have the guys that are going to be able to, to compete in that aspect, so we're going we're gonna to make sure we give it everything we got and, um, and, and work hard, get 1% better every day, and, and keep moving forward. We're not too flashy. We get the puck down low and work hard. I'm just excited to be here for one more year and just hopefully get to state this year. Been close the last two years. Hopefully we can make that push. I'm just excited to get close with the guys and to build some chemistry and just uh, have the best senior year I possibly can. I'd say we're a pretty good team. Uh, we're pretty tight-knit. We do a lot of stuff outside the rink and I'd say kind of a 
we're, uh, I don't know, I think we're goofy a lot, but we can uh, get focused when we need to. I'm most excited for just a good year. Uh, I think we have a good chance to do some pretty cool stuff, and we're a really uh, tight-knit group, so hopefully it'll be a fun season with everyone. You know, I think last year we had a lot of top-end talent uh, that we lost. Um, a lot of good leadership with their senior group and, and whatnot, but uh, with this team, you know, they, they just kind of, they, they took it as now it's their turn, right? And they're gonna, they're gonna take advantage of that opportunity and, and they're gonna, you know, they're gonna fight. They're gonna be very, very competitive all year long. Um, we'll be in a lot of really, really good close games and then, you know, hopefully surprise the teams this year. Ready to go tomorrow. Good job today. Get a break, pick them up. Let's go, boys. Let's go, Aaron. Let's go, Rebels on three. One, two, three, Rebels. Welcome to QC TV Sports as the Coon Rapids Cardinals take on the Champlin Park Rebels. The ice is cold, the players are ready, the game is on. Champlin Park led by Will Bernavec with 18 points, followed by Trevor Aberwald and Brent Solomon, both with 15 points, will try their best to bring it to the Cardinals. While the Cardinals' leading scorers, Rowan Bresnahan with 12 points, and Tyler Barsness with 11 points, will bring it right back at the Rebels. By the end of the first period, it was 2-1 Champa Park over Coon Rapids, with goals on the power play by Will Bernavec, assisted by Carson Anderson and Trevor Aberwald at 1.22 into the period. Second goal, also by Champlin Park, Nick Carlson, even strength, assisted by Brockton Sando and Brent Solomon. Then late in the period, at 11-11 mark, Trenton Thiessen scores on an even strength goal, assisted by Zach Novak. In the second period, Trevor Aberwald, even strength, assisted by Will Bernavec and Carson Anderson at 13.23 in the second period. And just a couple minutes later, Champlin Park again, Nick Carlson with the goal, assisted by Matthew Lang and Brent Solomon. To round off the scoring in the third period, Trevor Aberwald again with a even strength goal, assisted by Will Bernavec, with an eight minutes and 11 seconds into the third period. Finish the game. Will Bernavic, one goal, two assists, three points. Nick Carlson, two goals. Trevor Aberwald, two goals and assists for three points. Evan Whipple, with 15 saves on 16 shots on goal, is the winning goalie. Coon Rapids lone goal scored by Trenton Thiessen. While William Wagner made 30 saves on 35 shots. The game ends. 5-1 to one in favor of Champlain Park. It was girls hoops on a Tuesday night at Andover, Eastview in town, and both teams battled back and forth, and Andover got off to a quick start. That was Anna Baller on her way to 17 first half points. How about Gabriella Forrest? Four made threes in the first half. She had 13. There's Baller again in a driving bucket. They went back and forth. A lot of fouls in the first half. There's Forrest again from long range. And Andover led it. 27-23 at the half. Handover up to a quick start. Piper Engleby a three ball early in the half. Andover went up by as many as 12. The other way, Maul goes into the paint. Maya Maul and Eastview just kind of kept chipping away. Here's a nice pass. Frost drives in, gets the and one. Emma Frost had a good game. But the three started falling. How about Clara Goodman for the Lightning? Stolen away again by Maya Mall. She drives in for the layup. 
And eventually the Lightning would take the lead. One of the keys, Raja Torrey, a driving bucket. All her points, 14 in the second half. And Eastview would come back and win it 62 to 59.